The game may be titled Driver San Francisco, but in my heart, it has a different name. This is Driver El Camino. Wait, I'm sorry this is unprofessional. The way to review this game is to talk about the graphics, textures, and give a number rating. Nah, <laughs> f*** that. So here's the plot. You're a police officer in a coma with telepathic powers allowing you to jump from person to person and take over control of their vehicles. Let me get this straight. Would you zap into a fine looking lady? I keep my hands on the wheel. <laughs> Yeah. Your, uh, your side mission is to stop some kind of maniac bad guy. What you're really after is an El Camino that you have to outfit with wings and then fly into space, where you hunt down a group of alien cyborg women and equip them with Pontiac Firebirds that have fusion reactors. And together, you conquer the universe, stop the bad guy, and force General Motors to remake the El Camino. At least, that's what I took away from this game. Driver El Camino, or Driver San Francisco, is a 2011 Game of the Year contender. Because it's awesome. It has an El Camino, numerous Firebirds, and the AMC Pacer. F***ing A. Bonus points are awarded for the DeLorean DMC-12, Chevelle, and the A-Team Van. So here's the deal, as you play through the game and complete various driving missions, the game is called Driver after all, you unlock the city of San Francisco and earn points to buy new vehicles that you use in challenges. In addition to the amazing collection of cars in this game, the key feature is the ability to hop from vehicle to vehicle, shifting as they call it. It's like the Matrix. In fact, there's many missions which are completed not by driving well, but by taking over other cars and trucks and destroying things. It's awesome. I want that Lamborghini in front of me. I tap the A button and shift into it. And then smash it into something. It's endlessly entertaining, but this feature makes the missions extremely fun and eventually quite challenging. Here's one where I have to stop a group of tanker trucks and I don't even drive the car that I start with. I just take over everything around me and blow them up. To hell with the people actually driving these things. <laughs> Sorry. My bad. No, I really don't care. That's one so basically, you can take any vehicle that you see for a test drive, but you have to actually buy them if you want to complete the challenges that earn money. And there are hours and hours of challenges in this game. Driver San Francisco is like Burnout Paradise Test Drive Unlimited and the Blessing of Lord Carnage all rolled into one. It's a terrific blast of a game. And I think it goes without saying that the musical selections make just cruising around the city in your favorite vehicle a chill, relaxing experience. Even if you can't actually run over anybody. No matter how fast you're going, they always seem to jump out of the way. The variety of missions and challenges is really good and keeps the game entertaining. It never seems to get old. And with the addition of numerous multiplayer modes, Driver San Francisco has a lot of replay value. I'll cover the nice variety of challenges in part two. In the meantime, let's enjoy some more driving as we bring the city of San Francisco to its knees with the power of our magical El Camino. It's Driver San Francisco. See you back here in part two for more chaos. Yeah.